Hey Knights Nation, this is Matt Haig. Uh, I've been with the Knights now for two years, um, going on three. Uh, I would say my appreciation for the Knights has evolved since joining the staff. Uh, it started off with recognizing um, the coaches within the organization truly care about player development, which can get lost in translation sometimes at the youth level. Um, I think seeing some of that stuff um, get put into play with our such things as our fall development program to where we put an emphasis on breaking down the game and uh, having teaching moments instilled throughout the games. Um, I think one of the other things initially is the talent that the organization brings in. Um, of course, working with talented players is always a, a fulfilling thing in itself. I think it evolved into the structure of how the organization is ran and what they preach with the Knights way uh, of the character on and off the film. Um, I think one of the touchy subjects I wanted to touch on today was um, that of exit velocity and the use of technology. Um, when using exit velocity, understand that um, there's a time and a very beneficial place to use it um, but it can also be dangerous as well when players go to showcases they're always judged on it what's what's the maximum exit velocity understand that a lot of the readings on the maximum exit velocity are low hard ground balls up the middle necessarily don't play um, if a player truly wants to be successful um, the number is very important, but also want to recommend the other couple things to consider. Um, exit velocity reads the initial impact off the bat. And understand that with distance it travels, the exit velocity shrinks. So what comes into play there is swing plane and why it's important. Um, other things such as spin rate, um, connection in the swing, some mechanics, making sure we're not extremely steep to a ball. Um, you've heard that common term of swinging down on a ball, which understand that it is a, a, a mental cue for some guys, but it's not necessarily what is going on in a person's swing. Um, if we're extremely steep to a ball, swinging down on a ball, it has a tendency to put turbo spin on it. Um, the exit velocity is kind of a complex thing. It's, it's good to know. But as a hitter, we're always trying to stay within 10% of our maximum exit velocity. 95%, um, I believe, of extra base hits in the major leagues is within 10% of their maximum exit velocity, as well as between the launch angle of 5 and 40 degrees. So it's kind of a complex thing to understand that it's just not exit velocity. There's a lot of other things that go into it. Um, I think one of the ways it can be useful to understand the swing plane, um, when we can consistently barrel up balls at 10%, it shows that usually there's um, some good things going on in a swing. So incorporating things such as launch angle and um, spin rate of a ball, um, that it really is useful knowing all those things, just not one thing. Um, and I think that gets lost in translation from time to time, is knowing this is a complex thing. So um, understand that there is a way to practice um, with exit velocity and launch angle and, and spin rate. We want to, as a hitter, if you guys do get a chance to get on a Rapsodo or a Trackman, I know the Knights recently purchased some Rapsodos. I can give you guys a work at, workout plan um, as far as how we practice. For a big physical guy that produces high exit velocity, we usually want to stay within the money zone or home run damage zone is anywhere from 20 to 35 degree launch angle with 10% of our maximum exit velocity. Um, the optimum range for spin rate is 1,500 to 2,500, I believe, RPMs. So understand that that's hitting the ball correctly. Um, on a good swing plane, that means that the barrel or the ball is rotating correctly. Too much spin is usually a super pop-up. That usually comes from like a steep swing 
we're, we're swinging really down on a ball and then it clips it, it puts turbo spin on it, or we hit the top of it and the spin rate is consistently turbo spun in the ground. Um, so I think if you are a smaller guy um, that knows that you're more of a line drive hitter, that doesn't mean we don't use exit velocity or launch angle or spin direction. That means usually we still always train 10% of maximum exit velocity, but we're staying within, um, I think it's usually 10 to 20 degrees to be a line drive, what's called a line drive hitter with the technology. And then the bigger guys that produce a little higher, you can get from 20 to 35 and up. Um, so knowing what type of guy you are when we do use this technology is a big thing, but we're still always trying to achieve within 10%. Um, I hope you guys had a little fun with this. Um, I'd love to do something a little further on with some stuff, but just making sure you guys understand a little bit about the exit velocity and all the technology that's being used right now. Um, we can use these technology uses to be trained very efficiently and at a higher level that does indicate and show some things in a swing that's hard to tell with just the naked eye. Um, and I know, understand that we have really good coaches and everything that may see some of this stuff, but it's always a fun use and a uh, way to practice with some of the stuff. Um, understand that the way we practice and train, we're not necessarily going into a game that is, and we're thinking, hey, I want to try and hit all these technology uses. Um, we're trying to go in there and train the right way, so when we get into game, everything comes out naturally. I hope you all enjoyed the talk, and uh, look forward to hearing more from you. Nights for life.